First and foremost, man, how are you and your family doing? You guys hanging in there and uh, staying safe and healthy? Yeah, we're doing good. I mean, as good as we can be. I have four kids, so uh, it's it's not easy trying to uh, distance, learn to figure out the whole distance learning in the house with you know age age group ranging from four to twelve. So uh, my wife and myself have our hands full. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> serious, uh, serious hands full. Um, let me jump into it so I don't take up much of your time. Obviously, today's Jackie Robinson today, uh, day today, and with everything going on in the world, it can get lost in all this, but we wanted to make sure that the importance of the day goes on. Can you just explain to me how important this day is to you and your family? Um, I mean, it's, it's important of the utmost in, in our family, and it really, honestly, it should be important to everybody who um, enjoys the game of baseball. Uh, Jackie came in at a time where there weren't any African-American players in the league. And uh, you, you, it took a special individual in order to pull it off, right? Um, it couldn't be somebody who was too hot-headed because there was, you know, unlikeliness if it went wrong at that point, who knows if the, when the next opportunity when it would have been allowed. So he took on so much more than just the actual playing the game of baseball and um, I'm not sitting in front of you if if there was no Jackie Rock. Yeah, and and with that being said, you've you're in such a unique standpoint where you've played the game, you've got to watch the game growing up, and now you work in the game. How special yeah. was it as a player to run out onto the field with wearing number 42 on your back? It was awesome. It was awesome. Um, I think the first time I got to participate, we I was with the Brewers. We we're in the new St. Louis Stadium at the time, and it just you know, when you're when you're young, I think you know the significance, but it's hard to to really grasp it. But as I spent more time in the league, um, it became. I mean, it, you just start to you, you start learning more about the history of it. And I think for me, the biggest eye opening for for me was when I got to the Dodgers organization and I got to sit down with guys like Don Newcomb, God rest his soul. Um, I would get I got a, a kind of a, a backstage look, if you will, of what it was like because Don was one of the players, Don Newcomb was one of the players uh, that came in alongside. He didn't get to the big leagues as fast, but he got to see what Jackie went through on an everyday basis almost. And it was, I know, it was an eye opener. And I think at that point you start to realize this is, this is so much bigger than, than the game of baseball itself. I mean, he, he literally had a hand in civil rights because of that you know so uh it, it's it, it goes without saying that this day regardless of whether there's baseball out there right now you know there's not much of anything going on in the sports world um but this is important that we recognize this day because um it, it has the utmost importance to not only uh, the game of baseball but to society itself yeah, very very well said uh, did your dad ever pass along some stories or talk to you about Jackie Robinson Day when you were younger? And if he did, just kind of what were some of his messages he passed along to you? I mean, the same messages that, you know, we get, we're, we're getting now. I mean, you just recognize the significance of, of what he did, how difficult it must have been to pull off in that time. Uh, those things were impressed upon me at an early age. But again, in, until you're older and have the capacity, mental capacity to, to really look back and, and think uh, how difficult it could have been, uh, how difficult it was for, for Jackie, um, it, 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 it resonates. And, you know, because once you start playing, and, and it's, it's just difficult to get the big leagues in general, I think, <laughs> without any of the extra stuff going on, baseball's hard. And I think in those times when you start bickering and you, you're in your feelings about what's going on, it's, it's easy to look back and, 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 and kind of gain some perspective uh, when, when you think of Jackie in those moments. Absolutely. Uh, I, I assume you're probably missing baseball just as much, if not more than so the much. rest of us. <laughs> so much. Um, what are your thoughts on some of the MLB's ideas of doing this Arizona League or trying to get back to baseball in a hurry? What are you, what's your take on some of this? Well, I, I think it was nice to hear Rob Manfred yesterday basically say, we can't even begin to think about what that is until 
it, we're, it's not a health risk to the players, the fans, the people that work in baseball, first and foremost. But if there, when we get to baseball in 2020, um, everybody's going to have to have a, an, an open mind. And, and I say that because I know most people who love baseball, who are in baseball, have a hard time with change. So 2020 is not going to, is most likely not going to look like anything we've ever seen in baseball. It's probably going to be a condensed season. Um, I like I, I like all the other ideas. To answer your question, Jake. I like all the ideas. I'm open to all of the ideas. We can't think of it in terms of how we thought of baseball and what we've been used to. Teams may be jumbled. Leagues may be jumbled. It's going to be a condensed season. But ultimately, when we get to that point, I believe we could have one of the most exciting seasons. I mean, when you have to condense a short season, now, you know, we're so used to in April, May, June, you just kind of going through the motions as fans, watching the game, enjoying it. But after the All-Star, to get, after the All-Star break, things kind of start picking up. That'll be the case from game one, once, once we get back on the field. Everything is going to be so conditioned. These games are going to matter so much. Um, and listen, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an optimist, so I'm always going to try to find some positivity and try to find some light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So uh, I'm open to all the ideas, though. I like, I like your optimism, so I'm going to say the next question like this. When baseball does come back, uh, what are your expectations for our Padres? Listen, I think it was – I got a chance to see those guys play uh, in spring. And forget about how they played. It's the way they were going about it. I just, I just felt like there was a – excuse me, a seriousness to everything that was being done. There was an attention to small details that we haven't seen in a little in, in a few years. So I'm a, I'm I'm very hopeful for the pod. I think they got a chance to do make some noise. And again, in a condensed season, who knows what could happen at that point. So uh, I don't know, you know, the question's been asked, does it favor them? Does it not favor them? I don't know if I don't know if it favors anybody, right? Uh but we do know the games will be more meaningful when we get out because there's no way there I, I have a hard time seeing there being more than 90 games at this point you know for a season so you're pretty much stripping the season in half and games are going to be more meaningful so I think the pods but to answer your question I'm sorry I get a little excited when we start talking about baseball love it <laughs> uh, uh, I think I think the pods got a chance to be really good I think they got a chance to at the very least could be competing for a wild card whatever that looks like yeah what are some of your quick impressions because again i don't want to take up too much of your time but quick impressions of, of jace tingler i think you said you saw the focus that the team had i probably a direct correlation of the attitude he's brought into the clubhouse uh what are some of your quick thoughts on him as a manager well like i i i i've mentioned it before but i i've known jace for a little bit we played ball together back in cape cod league when he was college we kind of stayed in contact through time but uh to no surprise to me uh yeah all of that like he is he is as astute um when it comes to the game of baseball as you'll find like he is on top of it the attention to detail he's a guy who's worn many hats in baseball right he's been a bench coach he, he's been a a a a a, a, con, uh, a quality control guy he's been around the big league level although he hasn't been a manager uh He's he's a, he's attentive to those small details. There's a certain type of hard nose that he had as a player that you can kind of see in his managerial style. So um, I think he's going to have some success. I, I, I I'm one that was on board with Jace from the moment he became the Padres manager. I think he's going to do well. Awesome. I got to tell you a quick story too before we go. Uh, <laughs> when you're with the Padres, so I grew up in Denver, in Colorado. And I grew up a Padres fan, though, because I was born in San Diego. When you, when you were with the Padres, I went to a, I went to a lot of Rockies games. But uh, when you guys were always in town, we came. And at one particular game, I was sitting behind the, the Padres dugout. And uh, I, I kept calling your name. And you actually threw me two baseballs when I was probably, I don't know, 13 years old or something. So I've always thought, <laughs> this is the first time we've met. So I'm like, I've got to tell him that story. I was, like, sitting behind the, the dugout in, like, a Brian Giles camo jersey. <laughs> I'm like, hey, oh, you just it, you know, you know, the Padre fans travel well up to to Colorado. So uh, generally speaking, 
I knew it was all love coming from behind the dugout. Most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Um, all right, let me let me ask you this final question. We've been having people leave us on a positive note. Doesn't have to be baseball. Doesn't have to be anything. Give me something positive going on in your world, and then also give me a plug for the radio. Uh, where can people listen? Love your show. Let's uh, let's give a shout out there. Um, so okay. Give me some you can listen. You can listen to me and Chris, uh, Gwen and Chris, on ninety-seven three The Fan, three p.m. to seven p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, something positive that's going on in my life. I've had the opportunity to leave uh, some of the frontline folks that are, that are that are literally putting their lives on the line. Uh, nurses, doctors. I even consider the people who work at the grocery store, right? They're, they're out there every day. So I've been able to leave some, some messages for them, trying to just lift their spirits and, and, um, and, and leave some encouragement out there because what they're doing right now is, is nothing short of amazing, right? They're, they're willing to go out there, serve us, uh, take care of us. And I just think that's awesome. We, I just can't, I don't think we can say that enough uh, to the folks who are on the front line is that, uh, we appreciate it and, and thank you. And listen, I know sometimes we aren't the most polite people because stress and, and worry can cause that, yet you guys still are out there. So uh, that's the message I want to leave is, is thank you, thank you, thank you. Couldn't have said it any better, man. Uh, and thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you stay safe and healthy and, and have a wonderful time and look forward to catching up with you in the future, man. You do the same, Jack. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah.